Why is there a giant pickle pot at the bottom of this steam engine? I'm Darren, and this is the Industrial Revolution. So this is the, the Moira mine engine, and it's, it's difficult to give an exact date when this thing was built. And the reason is that it evolved a lot over time. Uh, check out my video linked uh, in the description here on this engine. It's, it's a pretty impressive engine. Uh, the engine in its current form was about 1821. It was working as both a pump and a winding engine. But the cylinder itself, which is what we're looking at today, uh, that actually is from the 1790s. Now we know that was from the 1790s because of that box at the bottom of the cylinder. That's called a pickle pot, and it was designed to cheat James Watt out of patent royalties. So the Moira engine, as well as pretty much every steam engine, has a pickle pot on it, uh, is effectively a Newcomen engine with one modification. To understand why they'd make that modification, though, let's take a look at this uh, Newcomen engine. Uh, this engine happens to be the oldest surviving intact steam engine in the world, and it's also here at the Henry Ford Museum here in Dearborn, Michigan. Uh, I have a link to this one, and the other engines I'm speaking about today are all in the description. So Newcomen engines, like Watt engines, are actually atmospheric engines. Uh, you have a large single cylinder, a uh, single acting cylinder in fact, so it's open on the top. Piston moves up and down in this cylinder. You inject steam into the bottom as the piston moves up. Then you spray a little jet of cold water into the cylinder. Uh, that creates a vacuum when it condenses the steam. And the vacuum uh, on the inside and the atmospheric pressure on the outside, the atmospheric pressure pushes down on the piston. That's what's called an atmospheric engine. Watt engines work the same way except they made one little modification. Let's take a look. So right next door we have the 1796 Watt canal pump engine here in the museum. It was in 1769 that Watt actually patented the external condenser. Uh, that was the invention he was famous for. It cut your fuel cost in half, which is an incredible savings. But unfortunately, if you wanted a Watt engine, any time from 1769 until uh, 1800, when the patent expired finally, you had to pay not only for the engine, but you had to pay a licensing fee. And the licensing fee was half the cost of your fuel savings. Now, imagine that you decided to pay extra to get a car that would drive 50 miles per, get 50 miles per gallon instead of 25 miles per gallon. So you bought the more expensive car, but you, you make up for it in fuel savings, right? Well, sort of, because then, under the terms of Watt's patent, you would have then had to continue to pay the car company 50% of your fuel savings forever. These engines were massive, they were expensive, and they often lasted a century or more. But what were you actually paying for? Well. Around the other side, this is what was actually created. This is what James Watt made his, his name on. So if you see the cylinder on the left, that's a separate condensing cylinder. The steam from the main cylinder, instead of condensing in the main cylinder, would be vented to the separate condensing cylinder. The cylinder on the right is actually a, a little vacuum pump, an air pump, and that's because this was a more advanced design. This metal tank would have been filled with water, and that would have helped to keep the condensing cylinder cold. Then the vacuum pump between strokes would uh, vacuum out any condensed water, any leftover steam or air in the cylinder. That's the whole basis of Watt's patent, and this is what people try to get around. So we're back over here at the Moira uh, mine pump again. And during the time of Watt's patent, which was in effect from 1769 to 1800, there were about 2,200 steam engines built. Of those, only about 450 were Watt engines. 
Now, Watt steam engines were far more efficient. They were far cheaper to operate, but the licensing fee just really turned a lot of people off. And because of that, of those 2,200 engines, about 1,800 were actually Newcomen engines. And many of those uh, actually had some modifications to them. So a standard Newcomen engine by this time was, initially they were called fire engines. Uh, by the time that Watt's patents, uh, patented engine came out, uh, Newcomen engines like this were actually being called common engines. Uh, gives you an idea just how common these things really were. It would make sense, you'd think, to buy a Watt engine, but because of that licensing fee, a lot of people attempted to do various upgrades, uh, and that led to something called a pirate engine. And this is a pirate engine. Let's take a look. So as we take a closer look here, the cylinder is pretty much the same as a Newcomen engine or a Watt engine until you get down to the bottom here. You see how the bottom is sort of rounded out and goes to that large pipe into the box at the bottom called the pickle pot. Well, in a standard Newcomen engine, you wouldn't go into that box at the bottom. You'd actually be injecting the water directly into the cylinder. But here, you inject the water into that uh, container at the bottom. Uh, that actually allows you to condense in there and keep the main cylinder hot. So you don't lose the heat. And if you don't lose the heat, you don't lose your power and you don't lose your power, and you get a more efficient engine. So how common were these pickle pots? Well, this is the 1791 Dudley engine. Um, locally, over in England at the time, it was known as the windmill end engine. And this engine actually uh, uses a, a couple of ways to bypass patents. Uh, to, you know, the crank here, for example, was, was a different approach. If you look at the Watt patent uh, on the engine behind it, there's the sun and planet gear. The crank, uh, Watt actually used the sun and planet gear to avoid using a crank. Well, let's take a look inside. And you see inside, we have sort of the same Newcomen engine here. Single cylinder, open at the top. Uh, the bars are to get things in line a little better. It's effectively the same. Uh, you have the plug tree here. It's a little dark, so if we turn some more light on, you can get a better view of the plug tree. It controls the, all the valves. You take a look underneath here. And you see if you look underneath the cylinder, sort of under the floor, before that other beam, you see it goes to a narrow, narrow pipe and then opens back out into the round cylinder. That's the pickle pot. So how did people get away with this? You look there, you can see it's, it's obviously, that's a condenser. It's just like on the Watt steam engines, right? Well, there's a couple ways they did it. Uh, first thing is they claimed that that was actually part of the main cylinder. The cylinder just came down, narrowed out, and opened back up again. Sometimes there was not a valve there, sometimes there was a valve there. Uh, but in any case, they claimed it was part of the main cylinder. And as part of the main cylinder, it wasn't violating the patent because it wasn't a separate external condenser. Even more important though, uh, Watt's patent at the time was considered kind of iffy by a lot of people. It was really, really broad. It was very vague in some areas. And unfortunately, um, or fortunately, as the case may be, uh, a lot of people thought it was really not enforceable. Effectively, James Watt had these, this patent, but he didn't really enforce it. He didn't really take many people to court over it, even though there were hundreds, if not thousands, that violated the patent to some degree, whether a, a pickle pot like this, or even a full external condenser, that you know, they just didn't even bother hiding in some cases, uh, just because his patent was considered weak and he didn't go after anybody. And the last thing he wanted, the last thing Watt wanted, was for his patent to actually be challenged in court and declared invalid. So pickle pots like this are, are certainly not as efficient as an external condenser. 
uh, but they were more efficient than running the Newcomen engine without them. Uh, so you put something like this on, it's fairly small, it's fairly cheap, it's fairly easy, and it gives you a fairly significant increase in efficiency and reduces your fuel cost by quite a bit. Uh, this was questionable from the patent law aspect. Did this take money directly away from James Watt? Yeah, it did. Uh, these were pretty much violations of Watt's patent, but Watt was afraid to enforce it too much out of fear of losing it. Uh, so we got, pat we got pirate engines as a result, and the pirate engines like this, with pickle pots, with external condensers, uh, these are the industrial revolution. Hey, wait just a second before you go. I need your help to keep the channel growing here. Uh, first thing you can do is really easy. Uh, just like, subscribe, share this video. Tell all your friends about it. That spreads the word. Uh, YouTube will see that and we'll show this to more people. Uh, commenting, more than just two or three words. YouTube says that's the most important thing you can get. Uh, it's the best kind of user interaction there is. Uh, so you can comment more than just two or three words. Uh, also, uh, if, you're, if you're able to and are interested in helping out financially, uh, these are pretty expensive videos to film, a lot of travel costs on top of the hours of work I do here. Uh, you can help out at uh, patreon.com slash industrial revolution or become a member here on YouTube or a single contribution through uh, Super Thanks. Also, uh, have an affiliate store. If you click that, uh, anything you buy there, a percentage of that purchase will come to help fund the channel. Uh, thanks for your help. And I look forward to seeing you next week.